Thank you, Kevin. Welcome, everyone. I'm Tony Crawford, and I'm really surprised to see so many of you this evening, considering how rainy it is. Uh, just some context or some background on myself. As Kevin mentioned, I am a member of the uh, Villages Apple Club. It's called the Villages Apple User Group. How many of you have iPhones and iPads and Macs? Oh, wow, that's good, almost half. So you might be interested in attending that. If there's a website, you can learn about it. TVAUG.org, TVAUG.org. Anyway, I do presentations there, but I've also created some tutorials for people who want to learn more. And one of the tutorials that I've just recently created is this one, Cutting the Cord. So as Kevin said, I'll be doing it uh, again tomorrow, so you'll be able to see that. That session and today's will be recorded, so it'll give you a chance to go over it because I know many of you will find it very difficult to see what's on the screen because you're so far back. So if you take the recording, it's going to be a lot easier to read the information if you want. But don't worry because every slide that I cover, I'll make sure I talk to the important information. So if you can't read it, don't worry about that. So this cutting the cord session is one this Thursday on April 11th and I'll be doing another one on May the 24th. These are small group sessions like a maximum of eight people. So if any of you are interested in those, come and see me. Okay, we're going to go through the roadmap and uh, I'm going to do this first of all at a very high level, block by block. It's a, it's a stepping stone. You have to go through each piece and then we're going to go through in a little bit more detail. Now this is only an hour and a quarter I have tonight. So it's going to be an accelerated version. So uh, you know, I apologize if it might seem a lot of information, but I really debate. In fact, I've cut out a few slides, but it's like a jigsaw puzzle. If I leave out too many uh, pieces, you're not going to see the big picture. So I put in all the pieces, albeit I'll probably go through them a bit faster. So the first thing we're going to look at, and this is one of the pages in the handout, is the current services. Does this sound better? Can you hear me now? OK, so current services, even if you just take a blank piece of paper, draw a dotted line across the middle and say what are the channels that you like to watch right now and put the ones you really really need to and want to watch on the top and put some of the ones that maybe if done cost too much and it's not hard to get put those at the bottom because whatever you put on the sheet as what you want is going to have a net cost further down the line so you want to keep that to a minimum and the second thing you want to know is what have you got in the way of internet? What have you got in the way of uh, uh, DVRs, etc.? So this will be the first step we'll be going through. Then we have to look at the internet. The internet's the, the lifeblood of your service. So that's obviously the most important piece. How are you going to get that? How much is it going to cost? And if while you get that, are you going to get your TV channels from the same internet service provider? Or are you going to get it from someone else? So that'll be another decision point. And then the third thing, as uh, Art talked about, is phone. Do you have a phone? Are you going to have it part of the internet service provider? Are you going to get it some other way? All of these have cost implications, service implications. And then you want to get to the other side, which is, OK, I've found a nicer way and a better way and a cheaper way of providing the services that I want without the kind of restrictions of contracts and all these other things. So all these things are possible, but I, I want to warn you at the beginning here that as you go through this process, you, you will probably save money depending on where you start, but it may end up costing you more depending on what you, what you pick. I see we've suddenly got a volume increase. Is that better? Is it too loud? No, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Technology is coming along. Okay, so how do we get to the other side? Well, the first thing is, your internet service provider and at the same time as providing internet they can also provide TV channels and they can also provide your phone so that's one path across the way right the other path is to say okay I'll take the internet I'll take the TV channels but I don't need the phone I'll find some other way of doing that and the third path is to say heck with it. using the internet service provider for the other stuff I'll just use them for the internet and I'll find my own way across and one of those paths is to get an antenna and to get the local channels that way. And another path is to get a streaming service, and we're going to see what all those are, and to get a local service that way, and also to get other channels and services through that same source, which is a multiplicity of streaming services. Are we okay so far? 
So we want to get across from the left to the right, and we're going to take all these paths, and we're going to try and do it all in an hour. And if we can do that, you guys are great. Okay, considerations. Again, you won't be able to read this on the screen, but I'm going to read them out. So the first thing is, is a contract needed? As we go through these various uh, options, if you like, do we need a contract? And the idea would be not to need a contract because a contract ties you down and it limits you and it has other issues as well. Next thing to consider is the cost versus the value added. Every path you take has a cost and every path you take has a value added. Is the value added equal to the cost or not? And these are judgments you're gonna to have to make. And these are all personal judgments because you know one person in the room might like HBO and be willing to pay $15 a month. I had it for $1 a month uh, on, on one, of the bit, uh, one of the offers and I hardly thought it was worth it at that. So if you like Game of Thrones, obviously you're gonna think it's worth it. If you don't watch any of the programs in it, then you don't think it's worth it. So these are all decisions that only you can make. Don't be put off by someone else saying, oh, I hate that service. It doesn't do anything for me. It's what value does it have for you? Ease of use is becoming, I think, increasingly important because as we go through these new services, these new streaming services, you're gonna find there's a bit of complexity. You gotta sign up for them. You gotta understand how they work. You gotta hit all the buttons. You gotta figure out, uh, is there DVR? Can you record them? How do you figure out you know, what's available? So it's, there is a learning curve. So just be aware of that. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying this is a factor as we move forward. The next consideration is how many users can use the service? Because in a household, there may be two of you. If you all watch TV together, then there's no problem because you only need one person accessing the service. But if one of you likes to watch something in one room and one likes to watch another room, then you need two streams. If you're gonna share it with your family, your brothers, your sisters, your kids, then you need more streams. So that's a factor. The other one is concurrent profiles. Now it's not necessary in all services, but say something like Netflix. You notice when you sign on Netflix, you have a profile for yourself. And what's the purpose of that? It's to keep your personal requirements and your personal viewings to you so that if you're in the middle of something, you can keep track of it. If, if everyone was sharing the same uh, profile, if you like, you could be halfway watching it, someone else in the family watches it and starts from the beginning or ends it, you, you get all confused. So it's very good to have concurrent profiles where you need it. The next one is geographic coverage. Some of these services, in fact all of the services pretty well, allow you to use the same service up north. How many are interested in that kind of value, right? You can't take your, D well you can take your DVR with you I guess, but you can't really take the, the cable with you, but you can take a lot of these internet services. There are limitations and we'll talk to some of that. The next one is uh, internet data cap. I, uh, if you go on the, the website there, you'll suddenly see people are starting to say, what's this about data caps? So be aware of what it is, be aware of how much it is, and does it affect you? We're gonna talk about that. The next one is DVRs and program storage. We've all used, so I love my DVR, and it's very important that you have that capability, so look for that in the services. Having said that, there are some services where you don't need it, because it's all there anyway, it's all recorded, it's available on demand, you don't need a DVR. So you've gotta balance, you know, what we needed in the past may not be always needed in the future. So those are the considerations, and then there were some savings. We talked, I talked earlier about eliminating the phone. You can do that, or you can use alternate services, and we'll talk about some of those. You can bundle the services. If you look at the top track there, where you have the internet, you have the TV, and you have your phone, all provided by one provider, that is generally your best value. It doesn't matter who the provider is, they all work very hard to make sure that they bundle you, and they get you locked in with as many services as possible, and to make that attractive, they'll give you a good price. I know some people who have one of each, they have internet from someone, they have the TV from the satellite, direct TV, and they have the phone from the CenturyLink, and they're paying over two, three hundred dollars. So maybe that's a question we can ask now. How many of you, and this is not scientific, because obviously the, it depends on how many TVs you have, how many boxes you have, what services you have, but just to get a rough guide of what people are paying. If you were to add up all the internet, TV, and phone and Netflix and any other things that you're paying for all in this bailiwick and it you know just a rough number how many are below a hundred dollars one person okay well done two okay and there's about what 200 people in the room so 300 
we know the percentage. Okay, how many of you are between 100 and 150? Oh my goodness, that's quite a small number. Okay, in my view, I think you can all get there. So if you're above 150, we'll be able to get you down to at least 150 and below. How many of you are below between 150 and 200? Wow, that's the majority. How many of you are 200 and above? Oh my goodness, that's about 30 people right there. Okay, so I think you've come to the right place because you're gonna see a lot of opportunity to save some money. But there will be trade-offs and we'll talk about what those are. So we talked about bundling services, owning your modem. This is a thing that you can do and it can save you $13 a month or so, depending on the provider. Alternate services regularly. As we go through, you are going to see things that you probably haven't seen before that there are lots and lots and lots of streaming services from all around the world. You know, there's a couple from Britain that I think a lot of you will find extremely interesting and they're not expensive and they're not limited. They, you know, you just sign up for the month. So why, let's say you want to see, I'm going to show you maybe 50 or 40, whatever the number is, different types of services. What's to prevent any of you in the room seeing using them all? Absolutely nothing. You just don't have to pay for them all the time because you don't want, you cannot possibly see them all the time. So just pick one, spend a month or two or three on it, and then move on to the next one. That's the beauty of what we're he heading into. And the last one here is reduce additional TV boxes. I'll use my own house as an example. We had two TVs, we had an extra box in uh, one of the bedrooms, and it was only used when someone was sick, maybe once a year if that. And we were paying $10 a month for the box. And then I said, why is that? That's $120 a year. I can buy a Roku stick for $40 and that'll give someone in the room, maybe they can't get all the stuff that uh, the other TV can do, but there's something to watch. That's all that people mostly want. They can get Netflix, they can get anything that's uh, streaming. So there are lots of opportunities. We're gonna whistle through this. So again, I apologize if you feel it's a bit fast, but I'd rather show you the whole picture and then you're gonna have opportunities to uh, drill down in the other sessions. Okay, so let's start with the first one, the current services. So I've put a box around, can you see on the left? I've put a gray, I've grayed it out and I've put a red box. This is the area we're gonna talk about now. So this is the first part. Where are we today? So we kind of got a feedback from you of where you are. Most of you are 150 and above in terms of paying for your services. So again, the part of the exercise is this for you to do is to decide what services you want. Now, I've got a little star in the top right corner. Can you see that? That means it's a decision point. And it's a decision point for you. You have to decide what are the channels I really need. Now, I'd just like to caution that if you put down, like I would probably do, put down A&E, Discovery, TLC, well, maybe these are all things we used to watch. But as time has gone on, I find, and I think many of you probably find the same, you watch less and less networks, ABC, CBS, etc. You used to watch the discoveries and the A&Es, but you watch less and less of that. And what do you watch now? You watch the Netflix, you watch uh, Hulu, you watch uh, Amazon Prime. And why is that? Because they're all movies. You notice networks don't have movies anymore. Remember when they used to have a movie of the week every week or every night even? Now there's no movies on networks because no one's gonna watch a movie with commercials. So our habits have changed. I think as you go through this exercise, you will find the opportunity for your habit to change as well. In other words, there'll be more interesting things that you can watch that maybe will replace what you watch today. So the key here is to understand how much you're paying today, and then as we go through the exercise, see how much you can save. So here's the decision point. So at each decision point, I've said I'll take a question. Has anyone got one question? Because that's all we'll do at each point. And I think art is going to be the roaming mic. The uh, you mentioned that uh, DVR on demand, do you have to watch the ads with that? Um, it depends on the service. It depends on the service. There are some services where there are no ads, and there are a lot of services where it depends on the price. If the price is free, guess what? There'll be ads. If the price is significant, there'll be no ads. If the price is somewhere in between, like Hulu, they've got an ad service and they've got a no ad service, one is about half the other. So it'll depend on the uh, service. Good question. Okay, so let's go now to the second block. Okay, so this is the block that was the internet. So we're going to talk about how, what kind of service do you need, you know, to the question earlier, what kind of speed. And then we're also going to tie into this because the internet provider 
usually can provide you your TV channels and your phone. So we have to talk about these in, in concert, okay? So, this is Comcast. So how many of you have Comcast? Almost half, I would say. How many of you have Spectrum? Almost, not quite as many. And how many of you have CenturyLink? Wow, quite a lot. Okay, I've had Spectrum, sorry, I've had Brighthouse in another uh, place I lived at. I've got Comcast now. I've had CenturyLink. I had CenturyLink and it was supposed to be 10 megabits. And three times they came to my house and the fastest I could get is seven. So two days ago I went on the site and I see CenturyLink is offering gigabit. So I signed up, I said, put in your address. I put in my address. It said, congratulations, you qualify for high speed internet, 10 megabits. <laughs> so, so you have to be careful because it lot depends on the location. Okay, I apologize for this amount of detail, but I think it's very important for us all to know what we pay for, because until you know what you pay for, you're not going to be able to associate what's value and what's not value. So again, uh, I know some of you will not be able to see this, but don't worry about it, I'm going to walk through each column and at least tell you what the important information is. So I've basically got four columns there. One is for performance internet at 60 megabits a second. One is for blast internet at 150 megabits per second. Now this is all for Comcast. This is all pricing for Comcast. I'm sure Spectrum and the others are comparable. So if we're out plus or minus five, ten dollars, you know, don't worry about that. Just use this as an exercise. You can make your own data and your own you know, price list if you like. So we've got the 60 megabits, we've got the 150 megabits. That is just internet. And then we say, okay, let's add in some TV. So in my case, for example, I've added in 140 channels or 140 plus, and that's all the channels that I need. And then the fourth column is if you do that, plus you add phone, okay? So those are the four columns. Two are internet only, one is with TV, and one is with TV plus phone. So what does that cost? You can see that some of them are so much for the first year, so much for the second year. Let me just sum it up for you. The first one, that's 60 megabits a second, is $55 a month average over the two years. Now, after two years, you have to negotiate again because if you don't, they'll charge you the second year fee and maybe you can get better than that. I'm sure you can. So $55. Now, for an extra $8 a month, you get 150 megabits. Now, to me, that's good value. So to the question that you asked earlier, I would say, and this is more personal than it's maybe what the majority of people might say, I would say you should be at least 50 to 60 megabits. Now it's not to say that you can't get away with 25, and in very small gray letters I've put down, if I were to go to 25 with Comcast, it would cost me $43 a month. So I would save $12 a month. But at 25 megabits, you are likely to get buffering, you are likely to have problems if two of you are going to be doing stuff. So for the few extra dollars, go to at least the 50, 60 level and you should be fine. If you really are like me and use the internet a lot and do a lot of stuff and got multiple devices and home automation and things using the Wi-Fi, then you, you know, the price of the 150 is not unreasonable at $63 a month. So use that as your baseline. I've got a contact at the bottom right there. It's, uh, his name is Christo Christopher Merrill, K with a K, Christopher with a K. And I can vouch for him because I've talked to him several times. I've shown him this data. And I said, look, if anyone from our clubs come and talks to you, can they get this price? Because what I find is you talk to one person, you get one price, you talk to another person, and they say, no, no, that offer's not available anymore. So use his name and uh, I, I'm sure you'll be okay. So are we okay with the internet? So if we're talking $63 a month, that's a base. If I took no TV, if I did nothing else, that's what I gotta pay. Now if I take TV, if I put in the 140 channels, what does it go to? It goes from 63 to $80. How much extra is that? $17, okay. That's cheap, right? To get extra TV, cheap. I thought it was cheap, but, there's always a but, right? Look down, HD technology fee. $10. What is an HD technology fee? Oh, that's a Comcast fee that you have no choice. You have to pay that. And who does not have HD in their house, right? 
What's the next one? Each DVR, $10 a month. Okay, so we have to pay for each DVR. Again, do we need a DVR in each room? These are things you're gonna have to look at. I'm assuming at least one in my case, so I've added another $10. The next line says modem, and it says owned. If you own your modem, then you don't pay. If you don't own your modem and the provider provides it, how much is it gonna cost? $13, right? So I've assumed that it's, I've got it. Uh, the next one is broadcast TV fee, whatever that is, right? That's $10 a month. Next one is regional sports fee, $8.25 a month. I don't watch sports, can I not pay that? Sorry, that's part of our package, right? So when you add up that $17, it's 17 plus 10 plus 10, that's uh, 47. No, 17, 27, 37, right? And then another 10, 47, and another eight, $55. So now I've got at least a base that I can say that it's costing me $63 a month for the internet and it's costing me $55 for the TV, right? And you all need to do that because if you don't do that, you won't know what you're playing with. Okay, so far? So that brings us to the phone and then of course the phone is pretty simple. It just adds another $20. Okay, and we're gonna talk to the phone so Again, we're at a decision point, so we've allowed one more question. We'll try and keep it to one because we've got a lot to go through. Whoever's got the roaming mic, try and pick a different spot of the room so we equal opportunity here. From the back, anybody from the back? Right at the back, we got, oh, we got way later. If you have basic channels on the TV, roughly what should it cost you? I mean, basic, ABC, oh. NBC. Is yeah, are we talking from the internet service provider or are we talking somewhere else? You don't know. Okay, Comcast, this package is called, I don't know, Digital Starter or something like that. 140 channels. They do have a package that, and I don't have, you know, I was debating whether to show all the data, but as it is, I think I've got too much. But you can get 25 channels. They say 25, limited basic or whatever they call it, right? And it costs a fraction of that. So if this costs me, an extra twenty dollars that one might have cost i know ten but if you think about it okay let's say it, it costs half remember i said it went to seventeen dollars let's say it didn't cost me seventeen dollars let's say it cost eight dollars right it can't cost less than zero it's got to cost something so if it costs eight but look at all the other charges right is that by christopher in the retention department no christopher is not in the retention department he's in the lady lake store but he will give you whatever the current pricing is and this is the current pricing so I think the question was can I go cheaper with the limited you can but the f th this is why I'm at where I am because the price difference is so small that it's it, it's insignificant you might as well take the 140 channels where are Lady, Lake? Lady Lake it used to be they used to be on 441 but where the uh, Verizon store used to be by the Starbucks by Best Buy you know that so there used to be a Starbucks, and well, there is a Starbucks, there used to be a Verizon, Comcast took over the store. It's all nice and fancy. Before it was like a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. Now it's nice and fancy. And as I said, they will be helpful. But don't forget, this is a very, very competitive field. So you're going to see a lot of action happening if you haven't already. Tony, can I interject something, Eric? Certainly. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention to everybody, <coughs> I know I can see the wheels turning about how can I lower my Comcast price, all right? One of the most attractive parts about streaming and cutting the cord is that you're not locked into any contracts. How many of you here have a contract right now? All right, so you're locked in. And that's what these companies are going to do. They're gonna lock you in. When you stream, there are no contracts. And every streaming source out there that is available all right, is providing you with one week free access. Doesn't cost you anything. You can try and see if you like it. If you don't like it, you move on, just as Tony said to another source. Many of them have built-in DVRs. You can DVR any programming that you want. Something like YouTube TV has unlimited DVR. You can, you can DVR every program that you want to watch and they keep it for you for nine months. So it's out there, but if you want to save money, you've got to you've got to think about unloading the traditional cable or satellite services that you're getting. Sorry, Tom. Okay, thanks. 
Thank you, Kevin. Okay, so let's talk a phone cost, right? If you have a landline, you know, what we used to call a landline from, say, Centrelink, it costs 35, 40. In fact, I heard someone say 80. I don't know what that included, but mostly it's 40. So how many of you have a landline paid for by Centrelink or whatever? Okay, about 40. How many of you have bundled it with your internet service provider? So say with Comcast, you have a, a phone uh, capability. Okay, about uh, almost as many, but not quite. Okay, so that's going to cost you $20 a month. Again, plus or minus, depending on what your contract is. Now, the advantage of that is you've saved half already, right? So what else can you do? Well, there's UMA. There's a box that you plug into your router. It costs about $80 and you have to pay about $5 a month uh, for taxes or whatever they charge it for. So that's another option. How many of you have UMA? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. And there's also Magic Jack. Now Magic Jack is not quite as nice, I think, because the UMA you plug into your router, your router's always on, but the Magic Jack you have to plug into your computer. Is that right? No. No? Sure. You plug it into where? Plug it, uh, any power supply and then an ethernet cable into it and then out to the phone system. Okay, so you can go directly from your ethernet from your router into the magic jack. Correct. Okay, that's some news to me because I did have it years ago and that was how it was then. So you can do a magic jack, $35, $3 a month, you can see the cost is coming no, down. $99 for five years. For the, instead of $3 a month? That's correct. Well, but it's 99 for five years, so it's $20 a year, so it's right. about two bucks a month. But but you, if you did it by the month, it's three dollars a month. Okay. Okay. But you're saying it's ninety-nine dollars, hundred dollars for five years, twenty dollars a year. So if you want to commit to it, you can save even more money. How many of you have a magic jack? One, two, three, four, five, six. About the same as Uma. And here's the final, the his and hers. You can use your cell phone and you can bypass all that. Now some people want a landline. I recognize that, or they want a phone. So if you do that, then you've got to go through these other paths but you can get away with just having your cell phone and that becomes your phone. How many of you just have your cell phone? I would say more than half, okay. So let's talk about the modem. I'm not, I don't expect you obviously to read it, but I just put it up there to say, if you've got Comcast, for example, you're gonna provide your own modem. You have to know which modem to get. You know, Comcast, I'm gonna tell you. You can go to Best Buy, they'll probably tell you, you go on Amazon. But you want to get a, a cable modem because it's cable and you want to get a cable modem and you want to get the latest you can because this is a very critical part of your infrastructure. So this one says 686 megabits per second. That's about the, the latest speed. Most of you are getting maybe 50, 150, some are maybe have 300. So this will be well within your, your capacity right now. If you're going to get a gig gigabit, uh, 1000 megabit uh, bandwidth, then you'll need a different kind of modem probably. If you're gonna get a, uh, a router as well, you can get modems with routers built in. And if you do that, the price goes to about $130. If you're gonna get a router, again, make sure you get one that has AC. AC is a technology, it's like B, G, N, AC. AC represents the latest level of technology. There's a new one coming up, AX but that's not really out yet. So make sure you get the AC. Why? Because if you don't, let's say you happen to get an old router that someone talks you into buying, and it, this happens, believe it or not, it, and it's an N router, then you buy the latest iPhones, the latest iPads, the latest uh, computers. They all have the AC built into it, but they'll only run at the speed of the N because that's the router that you got. So it's very important that you get the AC router. So I've just shown that as, um, when you're getting it, don't forget there's a risk as well. If you have a problem, say, with your internet, you phone up Comcast, they say, oh, is that your router? Yes. Well, it's a router problem. <laughs> don't believe them because every time they told me that, I just wait a day and it's fixed and it goes on merrily. And I've had this my router for years. So any questions on the, the modem aspect? Just one question, maybe. Companies changing the uh, the fitting on the end so that it won't fit other routers. No, no, I don't think that's the well, case. Well, they changed it on ours. They changed it, did they? Yeah. Well, anything is possible, I guess. Okay. So moving on. Know your internet speed. How many of you don't know your internet speed? What you are getting today? Okay. 
And how many of you don't know what you should be getting? There's probably a few more than that, but about five of you have admitted it. Okay. So I have a plan, and you know, I, I don't blame you because if you look at your bill, it invariably says something like blast internet. What the heck is that, right? But I've noticed Comcast are doing a better job on my bill now. They actually show what I'm supposed to be getting, and they actually show the speed. So I can't criticize them for that. So I'm getting Xfinity, Blast Internet. By the way, if I say Xfinity or if I say Comcast, they're interchangeable, okay? They're the same company. It's just a brand name. So I'm supposed to get download speeds up to 150. That's what I s signed up for. Remember the second column? So to test your speed, you have to download the app. If you have an iPhone or an Android, whatever, you can download the speed test app, and it's by Ookla, O-O-K-L-A. There are hundreds of speed test apps out there, so make sure you pick the right one. There's a little bit of advertising, but it's non-intrusive, so don't worry about that. Just don't hit the button that says, do you want me to scan your computer? Because that's where they'll try and generate some revenue for themselves. Or if you don't have the app, you can go onto a browser on a PC or on a Mac, and go to speedtest.net, not .com, .net. And then you'll get an app that looks like this, and you can see the little circle that, uh, that shows uh, in the bottom. That's the app that you would download, Speed Test by Ookla. And there's mine that was running. It shows with the arrow, the red arrow, it shows I'm getting exactly 150. Well, it just happened to be at that point 150. But it does fluctuate, and it could fluctuate by 30 or 40. So don't worry if it fluctuates as long as it's not always downwards. Sometimes I'm getting 170, sometimes I'm getting 120. That's why I think it's important to be as high up the chain as possible, because if you pick 25 and then you fluctuate, you'll be 25, you'll be sometimes running at maybe five or less, and that's gonna be a real problem for you. So pick a level that will make you comfortable, particularly if you're gonna be doing streaming. So know your data usage and data caps. now. The top box here shows my usage for the last three months. And again, you probably won't be able to read it, but I've averaged it out for you. It's 350 gigabits a month. Okay, that's the amount of data that is going through my internet uh, pipe, if you like. And there's the fine print. Is there, a data, is there a data cap? For Comcast, there is. That's the fine print. Again, you can't read that. So I've summed it up in four lines for you. Comcast or Xfinity have an internet data cap and it is one terabyte, which is 1,024 gigabytes. We all okay with that? I'm using how much? 350. 350, about a third. So I'm a third of the way there, but I don't have an ultra high definition TV and I'm watching roughly two hours a night, maybe two to two and a quarter, two and a half, a night of streaming. And the rest, because I've got my cable still, I watch on the cable, so that's not counting. If you're going to move to streaming, guess what? Your usage is going to climb up. So I've heard of some people hitting the cap. I would say it's very rare, but I would say mostly you should all be within the one terabyte. So how many of you know your usage? And how many of you are, say, over 500 gigabits, halfway there? No one. Okay, good. No one today, but again, be aware that as you move along, that might change. So what happens if you go over? Well, we're gonna charge you. And we're gonna charge you how much? $10 per 50 gigabytes. So if you go up by one gigabyte, that's another $10. If you go up by 50, that's still $10. If you go up by 51, that's $21, uh, $20. And you're gonna keep going, but they're very nice. They said, look, we're not gonna charge you more than 200 extra, $200 extra. So very nice, okay? And not only that, they are going to give you two months, they call it courtesy months. What does that mean? If you go over, they're going to let you off and not bill you. If they go over again, and hopefully they'll tell you, because if they don't tell you, you know, you'll just keep going over. But you're going to get two months, so that's nice. At least that's a step. But the key is, of course, don't go over. And the last one is, if you want to pay for unlimited data, it's going to cost you $50 a month. So that's not bad, it's, it's like another 250 gigabytes. So if you go from 1,000 to 1,250, you might as well sign up for unlimited data because at that point, you know you're flat. Now, this is with Comcast. Guess what? Spectrum does not have a data cap as of today. You're all aware of that? No, no you're not, okay. 
and I'm going by what I know. If someone, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, they don't. Now, what's interesting is why. Time Warner would love to do it. Charter, which is one of the components of Spectrum, probably not. They were of the mindset that you need it. The FCC, when they allowed Spectrum to do the merging with all the companies, said for seven years, you are not to charge data caps. So those of you, in, and this was about three years ago. So you've got about four years, and then we'll soon find out if, spe if Spectrum's gonna follow. Centrally, again, as far as I know, does not have data caps. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So you've got these two sides, but the majority of us in the villages that use Comcast, we're on this treadmill, and I can see where it's heading. Yes? We're talking about different companies charging uh, uh, fees, term fees. Uh, Spectrum doesn't have a contract fee. Right. Right. No, I didn't, I didn't talk about contract fees, I don't think. I talked about data caps. Right. right. Okay, so let's keep moving. I do have a lot, by the way. I know you've got a lot of questions. Um, but we have a choice here. We can go at the speed of your questions, or we can try and cover the material. Which would you like? Uh, cover the material. Okay. What I'm trying to do is ask one question at every decision point that at least gives you a chance to refresh what we're doing. So very quickly then, um, estimated data usage. And again, this is rough, but it'll give you an idea. If you are watching in standard definition, it's about 0.7 gigabits an hour. If you're watching each high definition, it's about three gigabits an hour. And if you're gonna go ultra high definition, which is like double the speed, it's just over double, it's seven gigabits an hour. So just be aware of that, that as you move to your ultra high definition TV and you're gonna be streaming, you're gonna be trading towards the data cap. Okay, setting up your TV, this should be very simple. If you're gonna buy a TV, Obviously, you're going to buy the latest, the high def, the ultra high def. The prices are amazing. Like when I think of what I paid for high def TVs just a few years ago, and now for $300, you can get a 50 inch uh, ultra high def with all the buttons and with the whiz bang. So make sure you get four HDMI inputs. You don't need four. You probably can get away with three if, you, if that's all they're selling or that's the best price. But four would be nice because you're going to be plugging in streaming devices, you're going to be plugging in DVD players if you still use that, etc. Most of them will have an optical output, make sure yours does, because that will be useful for your soundbar. And then make sure it has a LAN connector. Why? Because ideally, you want to connect your TV to the network, not go through Wi-Fi. So we'll talk about that. And then soundbar, I think most TVs are flat, the speakers aren't very good. I have great difficulty hearing sometimes what's going on. So you really want the best sound you can get, and that usually means you need a sound bar. Don't get the cheapest model like I got. Get one or two levels up, and that might help you with the sound. You need high-speed internet, 50 to 100 to 150, somewhere in that range, best you can afford. You, oops, you need a high-speed uh, modem, and we talked about modems, and we talked about routers. Again, make sure you get the AC router, and if you can, it's very easy if you have cable, because the cable comes right into your TV, well, all the installer has to do, or you have to do, is put a splitter in, and then run your modem, etc., through the other source. So you can have your modem and your router right by your TV, which means you can then run an Ethernet cable from your router right into the back of the TV, bypassing all the Wi-Fi, and taking some of the strain off your network. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's that. And then you also need... Did I miss something? Skip over what? You lost them with the connection. Oh, with the connection. Okay. Okay. That was too technical, was it? Okay, so the last one was the uh, bit here. Um, you need a streaming device and a remote probably that goes with that. So we'll talk to that. Okay, antenna. This is one way of getting your local channels. By local channels, we mean ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, uh, CW. So we're looking at this component in the, in the roadmap, correct? Okay, you can get all different antennas. We are located roughly 70 miles from the, from the TV stations. 
which are mostly in the Orlando area. I think NBC might be in Melbourne or some of it, maybe a bit further away. 70 miles is about the fringe or the edge of what you can reasonably expect to get. So what does that mean? It means you either have to get the best antenna you can get, it means you have to put it as high up as you can get, and it means that maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. It depends on locality. Now, I know there's a lot of people in the villages that are very successful in putting an antenna, so let's see what we have today. How many of you have an antenna that works and that's an indoor antenna? Wow. One, two, three. I expected about 50 hands to go up. Three people, okay. How many of you have an antenna and it's an outdoor antenna? It's either stuck on the roof or it's a, a mast. One, two, three, about the same. Wow, okay, so it is a choice. Uh, you can see it's not necessarily a popular choice, but maybe over time it will be. But there are risks with it, okay? So let's talk about that. If you have an indoor antenna, the risks are minimal. In other words, you put it in, worst case it doesn't work, you've lost roughly $250, unless you have a deal with whoever's installing and says, look, I don't pay if it doesn't work, I don't know how that works. Um, but that's about roughly what it's gonna cost you. I've put a name there, I, I, you know, I was told it's okay to put a name, I have no commission, I, I haven't even met Tom, but all the wording that I've got and all the social media next door, etc., he's highly regarded, so if someone was looking for a name, Tom rooms at the Villages AV. I gather he's excellent on indoor antennas. He's even made a presentation to the Cord Cutters Club, which is available on the Villages Cord Cutter Facebook page. He's also a member. He's also a member, and I'm sure he'd be happy to send you the presentation if you needed it. So that's one choice. Now, what's the choice with the indoor? The choice is it's cheaper and it's less impactful, right? You don't have to have worry about the antenna flying off your roof, what the neighbors think, etc. What's the disadvantage? It's not as strong because it depends on obviously, you know, there's a roof in the way, it's not as high. So there are trade-offs. If you go the outdoor antenna route, and I've again given you a name here, John Pierce at International Satellite and Antenna. He was highly regarded by one of the people who's put in an outdoor antenna. So, and he said the range is 280 to six, $600. I would budget $500 if you're gonna go that route. Now on top of that, you probably need a DVR. You can get a Tableau, T-A-B-L-O is a nice DVR. There's TiVos and all these other ones as well. But again, you need something like that. That will cost you roughly $200. Plus you probably wanna pay $5 a month to get a, a TV guide so you can plan ahead, etc. Some people like to watch the local channels and they're willing to pay for it. Some people say, oh, I used to watch all that local stuff, I don't need it anymore. So again, that's gonna be a choice that you have to make. So again, I've got a little star here, that means I can take one question. Anyone got a question on antennas or anything at all? Is it necessary to have a cable if you, to get Wi-Fi? I'm not sure of the connection. Is it necessary to have cable for Wi-Fi? <coughs> Wi-Fi, is absolutely needed, so there's no question about that. And Wi-Fi is going to come through an internet provider, which can be a cable company like Comcast or Spectrum, or it can be Centrelink, or it can be at and It could be a variety of sources. In my view, without being too prescriptive, I would say stick with your cable company. They, I know they're not perfect, but they'll probably give you the best uh, Wi-Fi, the best internet for the price compared to the other choices we have in the villages. Does that make sense? Okay, super, let's move on. Okay, so, oh, the other thing you have to watch, by the way, is like the ant outdoor antenna that I saw in the villages, it was about 18 feet high. 18 feet, okay? It was, you see these ones here, the two little pictures, they're anchored to the roof. Now, I don't want to get into what's best. All I'd say is if I was doing it, I'd anchor it to the ground and maybe attach it to the side of the house. I don't want my roof touched with holes and things like that, if possible. Okay, moving on now, streaming services. So you know where we are now. We're now going to say, instead of getting an antenna, let's see if we can get these local channels to a streaming service. Does that sound good? What does that mean? It means we're gonna use our Wi-Fi, we're gonna use our internet to get the services that we otherwise would have got through the cable company at the top or through the uh, antenna in the middle. Okay, so let's see what does that mean. Now, if we're gonna get a streaming service, we need something called a streaming device. Does that make sense? It's a box, it's a stick, it's whatever you wanna call it. It's the intermediary between the internet 
and the service that we're going to get. So we need something that translates all the data that the, the streaming services have to be able to extract them and make it into a nice little package of channels. So let's start talking about streaming devices. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> eh? Okay, Roku. You've all heard of Roku. You can go anywhere from $29 right up to a TV, right? So that's choice one. You can get an Amazon Fire TV. Of course, Amazon's got to be in the game. They range from $40 and up. You can get Google. Google has a little stick you stick in the TV, and it's $35. You can get a smart TV, and that incorporates many of the things. We'll talk about that in just a sec. In the old days, you used to have PlayStation, Xbox, Wii. I'm sure you can still get TVs to that, but I would think if you're serious, you're going to pick one of the above options. And then finally, last but not least, now you know I'm biased to Apple, so you won't mind if I say this is the best device. You can take it and leave it, right? But to me it is, but I think it is for two reasons. One is it's a good device. It's obviously more expensive than the rest, but it does allow you to connect directly from your router into the box, so you bypass the Wi-Fi. Again, that's not 100% an issue, but it's nice if you can do that. To do that on some of the other sticks, like you can do that with Roku, but now you're paying about $100, you're not paying like $29. So the price difference may not be as much as you think. So it's a good device, and the, the, the uh, remote is a little bit rinky-dink, but there are ways around that. But the real thing that I think is gonna make the selling point is that Apple have announced just recently that they're upgrading their Apple TV app, and they're going to make that app obviously available for the Apple TV, but they're also going to make it available for the Roku and for the Amazon and on a whole bunch of TVs. So the Roku stick and the Amazon Fire TV is going to have the Apple TV. And starting in about a month's time, Samsung are going to have an, a TV that's going to have an Apple TV capability built in, the app capability. And Sony and LG and Vizio, all brand names, are also going to have an Apple TV. So I'd encourage you, those of you who have not made the decision, at least give the Apple TV a, a chance. You know, Talk to people who have it. Give me a call. Come and see it. Um, I think you'll be quite pleased. Now, here's what's interesting to me. In the past, it used to be a smart TV was whatever the TV manufacturer created. And it would have Netflix, and it would have Amazon, and maybe have a few other things. But I found it was generally slower, it was harder to use, and yes, it was a button on your remote, but there were so many other things you wanted to use, you rarely used it. What's changed, and it's happened uh, very quickly, like uh, uh, at least for a year or two now, they've had Roku TVs. Anyone got a Roku TV? Excellent, about six. A Roku TV is a TV with the Roku capability built in, so you don't have to get another stick. Does that make sense? Guess what? Toshiba now has an Amazon Fire TV. What does that mean? It means you buy a Toshiba TV, again, $300 for 50-inch TV that's got the Amazon Fire Stick built in. What's the advantage? It's one less box to carry, it's probably faster, and it probably means, again, you can plug in your Ethernet, which you may not be able to do with some of these cheaper sticks. And guess what's coming up soon, as I said? Apple's going to have Samsung, Sony, LG, Vizio, all going to have an Apple TV built in. So you can see what's happening in the industry. People are saying it's just like happened with CarPlay. A lot of people had their own navigation and na et cetera. Now everyone's either going to the Android or they're going to the CarPlay for Apple. So all the TV manufacturers have decided, look, if we don't jump in and start to make these devices available with our TV sets, we, we're going to lose out because someone else is. So you can see what's happening in the market there. Okay, so this is another decision point. So this means you have to decide which stick you are going to choose. So how many like and are using mostly for their big TV, the Roku? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. Okay. How many are using the Amazon Fire TV? Almost the same number. Okay. How many are using Google with the Comcast? Wow. How many have it built into the TV? Well, when I say using it, maybe I, I've been asked here to include if you have it built into your TV. So when I'm saying Roku or Amazon or Chromecast, if you have it built into the TV, that's okay. Which one do you have built in? All. All of them? Yeah. yeah. All. Samsung's been putting in there for over a year. Which one are they putting in? They all of them. All of them. You yeah. mean like they have the Apple yeah, TV? If it's not on there, you can download it. 
Oh no, you can download the apps. You can download VUCA. I'm talking of the actual channels and capabilities. But anyway, you know, I don't want to get into because every TV, you know, may be different. How many of you are using just the smart TV? Just what came with the TV? You don't have an extra box. Okay, so about 12 again. And how many of you are using an Apple TV? Oh my goodness, too few. Okay, about six. I hope that'll change. Okay, so let's move on. So streaming services, so now we got your box, and by the way, I want to make the point that all of these boxes will do the job. The only difference might be price, and it might be ease of use, and it might be, you know, certain channels might be only available on certain boxes. So you have to kind of research that out. Okay, so here are the streaming services. Now again, remember the picture here? We were trying to get to the other side, and at this point, we're still talking local channels, okay? So how do you get local channels? Well, first of all, CBS has a channel called, a, a service called CBS All Access. As of very recently, there's about 4 million subscribers to it. And it's, it's about $10 a month, I think. YouTube has something called YouTube TV, and this is fairly new, and it's growing very fast, but they have just under a million right now. Hulu has a service that just does you know, movies and TV shows, but they also have introduced one called Hulu with live TV, and that's going quite well. That's about a million subscribers. And uh, PlayStation View, which is owned by Sony, have about half a million. And then there's Direct TV now, which used to provide or still provides our satellite service, satellite TV. They've decided that everyone is moving. Let's move with the tide, and they're trying to offer a or they are offering us a service. How many of you are using CBS All Access? No one, okay. Two, two, okay. Wait, can we wait to get to the point? Okay, but you get priority, okay. Uh, next one is YouTube TV. How many are using YouTube TV? No, uh, one, one, okay. How many are using Hulu with live TV? Quite a few, five, okay. How many are using PlayStation View? Not many, two, okay. And how many are using Direct TV now? Two, okay. So. On the right, you can see some reviews. You know, YouTube TV is considered by some of the sites the best. You can judge for yourself. Why? Because like Kevin was saying earlier, there is no contract. First of all, every single one of these services will give you, and I think it's typically seven days free. Sometimes it's more, but let's assume it's seven days. So try them for seven days. You know, before you pull the plug, decide which one you want to get, and then you, you'll be ready. What I find interesting with them, maybe we should go to this slide here, is these are the, again, you won't be able to read it, so let me sum it up. So these are the five services in co five columns. The cost varies, but it's typically between $40 to 50 to 70, depending on how many channels you get, and which service it is. So it's in that price range, $40 and above, except for CBS, and why? Because CBS is $6 a month if you want ads, if you don't want ads, then you pay $10 a month. So what's the beauty of that? That means if you only want to watch the local channel in case it's a hurricane, you want to watch the news, you want to watch the weather, you want to watch the local sports, do you really need all the local channels? You could probably get away with just having the CBS All Access if that's all you wanted. If you wanted the other channels, then you're going to have to pay the 40 50 But don't forget, if you do pay that, you are going to get a lot more than five or six local channels. You're getting, you can see, 60 in the case of YouTube, uh, 50 to 100 in the case of Sony's PlayStation, 40 to 50 for DirecTV now. So they were all over the map. The real question then is, how much does it cost, and what kind of channels am I going to get for that? And you will be able to see that. How many streams? Again, we talked about that earlier. They all offer at least two, which in my case, most of us will be more than happy with. So whether you get three or five, it really doesn't matter. Two is all you really need. DVR, some of them have a DVR, some of them like YouTube, it's unlimited. You can record however much you want, but it, you can only keep it for nine months. Others, you can keep it as long as you like, but you can only record 50 hours. So again, you'd have to look at each service and decide if that's an important factor. We talked of profiles. Some of them have one, only one profile, some of them have multiple. Again, if that's important, you've got to figure that out for each service. Is there a free trial? The answer is yes. Every single one of them will give you a free trial for seven days at least. So take advantage of that, try them out, and then you'll start to soon start to see which ones you like. And the last one, like Kevin was saying earlier, do you need a contract? And the answer is 
No, uh, none of the services, as far as I know, other than the satellite, you know, the direct TVs and the Comcast for the internet packages, etc. none of the streaming services are requiring a contract. Now that might change. Like, uh, th there's, a, there's a kind of hidden uh, contract, if you like, that what they'll do is they'll, they'll say, here's the price per month, and let's say it's $10 a month, right, for the service. They'll say, if you sign up for a year, we'll give it to you for the price of 10 months. So we'll only charge you $100 instead of $120. So again, that's not a contract, you're free to, but once you sign up for that year, you've committed to the year, you've paid up for it, so that's in a way a hidden contract. And I've put at the bottom a note, please note that all this information is subject to change, so I don't want you to go out and cancel all your services based on data you see here. Please check it out for yourself because it does change. Okay, CBS. So this is the kind of picture when you, I, I got all these off the iPad because it was easy for me to take pictures rather than pictures of a TV screen, but this is all what they're gonna look like. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these, but just give you a flavor, right? So if you sign up for CBS All Access, you'll see this, these kind of things pop up. They encourage you to watch all these shows and you'll see a little menu on the left and depending on what you pick on that menu, shows, live TV, movies, uh, news, whatever, it will show you on the right the kind of choices you can make. And then there's the schedule, so you want to look at the live stuff, and you can see that based on the date and the time, you can see what's playing just as you would on any other uh, DVR, etc. YouTube TV. Uh, this one, they said 60 plus channels. If you then put in your location and your zip code, whatever, and then you look, this is what you'll see in terms of the channels you get. So again, from far back, you probably can't see it, but when you take the recording, or better still, go to YouTube TV on Google, and then you'll come up with the site, and then take a look, and you can see all the channels. It turns out there are not 60 plus, well, there are, there are 71. So there are more channels, but some of them you've probably never heard of, and may not even want. But there's things like the Golf Channel, CNN, you know, obviously all the local channels, um, so Fox, etc. And you, at the bottom, you can see additional networks. You can pay extra. So if you want stars, you pay extra. If you want something else, you pay extra. Okay, so I've been told to wrap in five minutes. So let me just run through and see what we got here. YouTube TV, Hulu is the same. Uh, PlayStation View, they got choices of 50 to 74 to 95 to 97 channels. So again, it's good exercise, you go home with your list of what you want, and then you can see what's out there. Direct TV now has two tiers of $50 and $70. And for those of you interested and were anxious to get the Apple TV, um, you can sign up for four months of Direct TV now, so that's $200, and you can get a $180 Apple TV free. It'll take a couple of weeks to get that. So that might be attractive to you. So in, in the net you'd be paying different is like twenty, twenty-one dollars. Okay, the, so these are the streaming services and as I say, the decision is hard because it's so much choice, but it's easy because you, you can just start with one and then you work your way, talk to your neighbors, see what they find, and join the cord cutters club and you'll get a lot of feedback. So other channels this is very interesting. Of course, some of you have Netflix. Okay, uh, so that's about 20. As I put up my hand, if I, sorry, as I talk to each one, if you have it, just put up your hand. Amazon Prime Video, which is free if you have Amazon Prime, far more than Netflix, I didn't realize that. That's about 30 people. Uh, Hulu, which is not the Hulu Live, so about five. Okay, six. Uh, HBO Now, one. Okay, Showtime. These are all $10, $11 a month, a couple there. CBS News, that's free, so you can all have that. Sling TV, $15 to $25. Fubo, Fubo is very good for sports. Look at the price, $53. Anyone have Fubo? When you win the lottery, maybe. Okay, Philo, uh, Movies Now, Acorn TV. Acorn TV and BritBox, you have those, fantastic. Those are British, right? Lots of very good, lots of good British programs. Look how much they are, $5 a month, $7 a month. And you don't have to have them for the whole year. Just sign up for a couple of months, watch what you want, and then maybe a year later come back. ESPN Plus, Spectrum, Spectrum, just as DirecTV now had a service, but that included local. Spectrum's now come out with a service that includes about 60 channels for $15 a month. So you can see the 
water funds changing. Disney's coming up with one soon, I'll have all their stuff. And Apple TV is coming up, Apple's coming up with one that have some special programs as well. So a very, very interesting environment. So this is the last slide really, and this is where you want to be, which is what services have you picked and have you seen an opportunity to save money? So I think with that, we've got three more minutes left. So do you want to take a one more question? No, no problem. We're going to do some Q&A. Um, I think you can all understand now that this is a lot more complex than maybe some of you that this is your first exposure to it, uh, no, knew about. I think it's important that you understand that these streaming services do have these free trial periods and you can utilize them even now. So before you decide to permanently cut the cord, you can actually attempt to see which streaming service you may prefer to use, the price and the type of uh, shows that are available. So we strongly recommend that you do that. We're going to open up to a, a Q&A session, and Kevin has graciously said that he will stay even longer, so that if you have specific questions that we don't get to in the open forum, feel free to come. But more importantly, for those of you who got the card, the court cutter's card, any question that you submit by the email to Kevin, he will make sure you get an email answer to it. All right? So why don't we begin now with some questions. I'll begin in the front, and I'll walk around.